This is now just getting silly. Welcome to episode number 38 of Profit or Loss, the series where I buy broken electronic items on eBay, try and fix them, and then sell them for a profit. Last week, we made our first little profit in a while, and I hope to continue that in today's video, edging that one step closer to £1,000 total profit. Let's have a look at today's first item on the table. It's a Nintendo Switch Lite that's come with Joy-Cons? Doesn't really make sense, but I'm also not going to argue. I paid £65 for all of this, essentially, and I might be able to even make a nice little bit of profit on these Joy-Cons. But our main attention at the moment is, of course, this Switch Lite. Now, this is disgustingly dirty. Look at all of the, uh, the dirt marks that we have on the back as well. It's just filthy. Looks like one of those restoration videos where they found it out in the wild, you know? Bad thing, we have lots of broken plastic. There's no serial number sticker here. The good thing is that the... Uh, the port actually looks okay, and we have all the screws intact, the two on the bottom, and even the two on the top. There is no game, unfortunately, and no SD card either. Let's just get an absolute confirmation that the port is okay before I go and plug the ammeter in. As you can imagine, it is in fact no power. Might even be a little bit of water damage. From what I can see, we see little green tints of things, right? That can usually indicate water damage. Water damage equals bad. So I'm not going to plug in the ammeter. I'm just going to take the board straight out of the chassis and see what's going on. Before I do that, a massive thank you, as always, to our sponsor of the channel, PCB Way. PCB Way are PCB specialists. From creating your own personal PCB, various sizes, different colors, and complete customization, to sharing a project that you've created, PCB Way has it all. Leave comments on other people's projects or even even download the Gerber files left by the author to give it a go yourself. PCBWay pride themselves on customer service with the help of their live chat function. Simply click on the chat bubble at the bottom of the screen so they can help you with any of your PCB needs. Check out the link in the description for a $5 welcome bonus. Well, my hope for this lasted a, a little, little too short. There's a, there's a screw missing here, which I didn't actually see. The rest of the trialing screws are in the case. I am missing like the most one of the most important screws so I think somebody might have been in this this Nintendo Switch has seen better days like it is uh it's hanging on for dear life I think my cat is meowing not usually allowed in here hey say hello or are you too fascinated with everything at the moment I think too fascinated I've got the board out of the chassis and to be honest with you I'm actually fairly hopeful for this the board itself actually looks okay from what i could see with the naked eye but i'm now just having a look underneath the scope we have a little bit of water damage there not massive water damage just something to maybe even just wipe off with some ipa but just have to bear it in mind look on the back this is an area that i did see which i don't think there's actually any components here i'll check now with some ipa and a cotton swab. Oh, that's like bare board, but I also think that that is just ground. There is one cap that was buried, but that seems to be okay. Nothing here, a bit of conformal coating can't solve, but I do need to scrape away. You see how this is just flaking? Ideally need to get all of that off because that will just cause further corrosion down the line. There are some lines here that are important, so we just have to bear that in mind and be super careful. I'm just running my tweezers over this area. I'm not digging in hard. I'm literally just going back and forth. Just expose what I can off the board. I'll go back over that. If we can actually manage to get the device working. No holes in M92, T36, or BQ. No cracked capacitors from what I can tell. Port looks a little bit worse for wear, but it hasn't been changed. This is in fact factory. Now that we've got this out of the chassis, I just wanted to inspect the port a little bit more. But to be honest with you, it doesn't look too bad. Just a little bit dirty. So I'm just going to give it a clean up quick. A little bit of IPA. Just on the top here. And this will come up as good as new. I'd most probably just get this swapped out anyway. However, I do just want to check again that the device works or doesn't work. Clean on the inside with me brush. All right, let's go overhead and plug this in and just see what happens. Oh, okay, we get a light. Five volts. Okay, five volts. Port, little bit wiggly. Okay, didn't like that. Oh, it's gone up to 15. What about this side? Again, 13 and a half, 14. Okay, so it's gone back up to 15. That was showing five volts a second ago, no? 15. And it's normal behavior as well because it's going 10 milliamps up to 30 and then back down. 40 milliamps, 50, zero. That's normal behavior for me without anything attached and this specific ammeter that I'm using. I'm just gonna check around M92 T36 and make sure we don't have any shorts. I don't think we will, because we're now getting 15 volts. Any shorts? No shorts there from what I can tell. Quick check over BQ as well. BQ also seems to be fine. Let's get a test chassis, because I don't think I'm gonna be using this screen anyway, because I mean, I can't sell it with this 
and the state of the back of it as well. Like, I just can't do that. This grey chassis, however, look at this. So let's put the board in and see what happens. Okay, I'll put it back together enough to test. Shall we see what happens? Let's go. Do we get an image? Because that also might have been what was wrong with it. 0 0.08, completely dead from the looks of this. As well as the fact we don't get a display on the switch. So we don't get a battery symbol up here, which is what you're usually meant to get when the battery's charging, regardless of how flat it is, I'm pretty sure. I do think this is just a flat battery. And what I would be probably confident in saying is that we have a screen issue with the switch light. So it's jumped up here to 460 milliamps. That was weird how it's just now jumped up to that. Usually it'll be like a slow and steady climb if the battery was dead. Oh, hold on. We now have a battery symbol. So what? It's very strange. I didn't do anything. Okay, well, I'll just leave it for a few minutes and see what happens. We could be onto a winner here. I, I mean, I just left it and um, this is now the screen. Now, let me tell you, this is like a turquoise I've never seen. Look at that. What? I've never seen this type of screen. I've seen a blue screen of death and I'm pretty sure there's an orange, but I've never seen a turquoise, like a like this sort of blue screen. I've disconnected the battery and plugged it back in, but um, I'm still not be able to replicate the screen that i just had like it's impossible it's now, now it's just not turning on i'm not getting a battery symbol on the screen either we get 370 milliamps and it jumps up to 480 but uh but nothing else still 15 volts the fact that i was only getting five volts when i originally plugged it in makes me think that there is an issue around m92 t36 even though we don't have a short and the fact that it's also been plugged in for a while now should bump up to fast charging but that's not happening either ah okay so i pushed on the back of the cpu and the ram and now we have this this is more so the blue screen of death rather than the turquoise one. So I think we have an issue with either the RAM or CPU. I just need to find out which one it is. Let's just go with a bit more force on the back. Okay, so I pushed down quite heavily on the APU there and it turns on. And to be honest, I don't know whether to go for a reflow or reboot the APU entirely. But it's charging, it's fast charging, 710 milliamps, 15 volts, 16% battery. And now if I don't hold down on the cpu power options restart what happens so i'm not putting any pressure on now i bet it works switch logo does it hang or does it no see it's gonna work yeah okay i'm actually gonna do something very stupid clearly i know that this nintendo switch works i could probably get away with just reflowing the apu and giving it a bunch of extensive testing to ensure that it's okay however i recently purchased a stencil for nintendo switch cpus and i'm pretty sure this does the switch light as well so of course for the sake of science i'm going to give that a go and it's good practice all right i managed to get the cpu off however i didn't record it just based off how awkward it was so i'm just going to add some flux here board's still relatively hot we're going to add some leaded solder just to lower that melting temperature make our lives easier to wick away i'm not pushing real hard on the iron here i'm literally just letting the solder do the work just almost gliding my iron over we're going to come through and wick it all up see how this goes again just gliding almost using my left hand to push and pull the wick so i know if it gets stubbed on anything cleaning the wick as i go as much as i can can just see little tiny bits in places little bit in this corner up here being sneaky now with this relatively hot i can just come in with my cotton swab and again gently not pushing hard because i don't want to pull any of these pads if possible not only rip pads but take conformal coating off because that can be an issue as well when you're doing these types of repairs that looks good enough to me to be honest now let's re pull the cpu going to in fact use my new chip holder for this i'll leave a link in the uh, description for this specific one for size reference that is the apu on a nintendo switch and look how much room you've still got to go all of this space up here first time using it but seems like really good quality same sort of process we just clean up the ic the cotton swab there we go very satisfying there we go that looks a-okay to me there's some little bumps there but we've got majority actually i'll probably get rid of these two just here also want to try and keep my holder as clean as possible to save me having to clean it every single time i go to use it looking good now for the main attraction make sure everything lines up which it looks like it does good take some solder pasta and apply it generously make 
Make sure every little bit is covered, which it looks good. Just go over it to make sure it's all smooth. Right, let's give that a go, shall we? So we're going to go 350 degrees Celsius, 50% airflow. Theoretically, this should be the satisfying part, but we'll see. Which I don't think it was. So that we can count as a fail. Attempt number two, I've uh, I've done all the solder paste, cleaned the chip, etc. I'm going to go 315 degrees Celsius this time with an airflow speed of 30. There we go, that's better. Wait for it to cool down a sec. I actually think there's a few too many mistakes in this one, so I'm going to have to do it again. We're missing a few, which is fine. I could just put some balls on there, but then we've got some bits down here. We've got like six or seven that are half done. This one is joined together, and yeah, I'm just not really happy with the quality of it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go again. Attempt number three. Here we go. The stencil. This is at 300 degrees, by the way, and the stencil is already lifting up. I'm actually gonna try balls and just see if um if that's gonna be easier because just not getting on with the pace today. 0 0.4 seems to be the right size. Okay, moment of truth here. I've just gone ahead and done everything. I've put the CPU back on. There's something about me just not getting on with these stencils. Either I'm applying not enough heat and it's just not melting, or I'm applying too much heat and the stencil is just bending in on itself. What happened this time, I used solder paste. I think I used the right amount of heat. It looked really promising. I then started to peel the chip off and the chip wouldn't come off the stencil. So I started applying heat it messed it up i had to do it again and it was just an absolute nightmare to the point where i had to hand reball like maybe 20 30 balls after i'd taken it off the stencil what we're looking for is 15 volts and about 10 20 milliamps and then drops down okay 15 volts okay so it went to 2 milliamps and then sorry 20 milliamps and then 10 milliamps i don't like the fact that it's still drawing current what it should do is go down to zero 54 wait an amp Oh, wow. No, that's not good. The chip is very hot. Let's try that again. Let's try this side. Maybe we shouldn't try again, but I'll just for the sake of science, you know, 0 0.01 and just hangs there. It's okay. Turn it back around. 56 milliamps and amp. 1.13. And the ch it's getting very hot. The CPU is getting very hot. So I think there's a short under the CPU. Took it upon myself to try this. I didn't really have to. I could have just gone with the reflow, but I wanted to have a little bit of practice of reballing and uh, clearly I, I still need some practice. I spent hours doing this and to the point where if I don't move on to the next item now, I'm not going to have enough time to get this video out. So I'll keep it and maybe we can just revisit it for a live stream. It'll be, it'll be fun to do that and take some rather harsh lessons on how to actually do it. So we'll take the L on that one. Maybe I can make some money back just with the Joy-Cons, but let's move on to item number two. This is a PS5 digital edition console. Guess how much I paid for it? 100 and 30 pounds you heard me correctly 130 pounds what's the issue it doesn't power on we are missing something up here i might live to really regret spending 130 pound on this but let's see shall we apparently it's been open before as well just quickly verify it definitely doesn't turn on pushing the power button and we don't get anything someone has definitely been inside the console because everything is ripped and the warranty sticker was ripped as well but the seller did make me aware of that on the listing now that we're actually inside the console you can see look at this liquid metal by the way there's an extreme dry spot i think somebody may have taken this off but obviously not bothered with the liquid metal but that is a huge dry spot first things first do we have an okay power supply i could do with a win obviously content would be better to repair a motherboard but if it is a bad power supply i'm also okay with that Oh, okay. The power supply is shorted. I guess with this one, I'm just going to swap out the power supply and uh, and we'll give it a test. There's something rattling in this power supply. Um, I don't touch power supplies personally. I'm probably going to reach out to Phil and see if uh, see if he wants it. Okay, so I put the new power supply in just for testing. Put a tiny bit of liquid metal, but I'm only going to just test it to see if we actually get power. So here we go. I've put a known good power supply in. Do we get anything? We're looking down here at the LED specifically and for a noise. In three, two, one. Yes, we do. Blue light. Don't turn off just stay on for me okay and it goes to a white light again i'm just turning it off two beeps one two there we go nice stuff i did quickly put the hdmi cable in but i didn't get a display let's check on the hdmi port and make sure it's okay how's that looking we're missing the cap here and how are the pins oh wow oh okay fine all right well that would make sense as to why it's definitely not uh putting an output i can't i mean it doesn't look like it's been changed that looks like factory flux to me but at the same time this cap's disappeared and it doesn't just fall off the cap doesn't just fall off so i'm wondering if maybe it's been shunted back and uh and that's what's caused it no i don't think it would i don't think it would cause the cap to go because i don't think these pins here are strong enough to physically break this cap oh okay fine yeah look. there we go okay so it's not just going to be as straightforward as a power supply, but the, the console turns on, so it's not too bad. Right, let's um let's change out this port quick. Yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't going to be as simple as just... I've taken the port off, by the way. Unfortunately, it's not going to be as simple as just a power supply. But that's okay. 
this makes for a little bit of content like i said so clean all the gun cup don't have to do this by the way this is me just this is the ocd part lovely jubbly put our flux down fill up our ground holes wipe away this flux here's our little cap i like to put it on first because i use drop method anyway so it doesn't really matter to me we put it on after or before a little bit of flux there we go to be honest with you, I like to go over the pins, but I mean, I'm very tempted not to here because that was a really, really nice reflow, but I am. You can see as well, look at the anchor points all the way through. It's a really nice reflow. No additional solder needed on the end of the iron just to quickly go over the pins. Nice clean. Are we cooking? Good looking is the question. Bar some fibers from the uh, cotton bud. Looking real clean. Every single pin here should be solid. Not going anywhere that port. Perfect. And here we have the back of the board as well looking super tidy. And most importantly, all of the components that are needed. So we have the cap here and we have the diode here. So I've put it all back together. I've turned it on. It's all on. And I've had to change HDCP. Lovely. Would you look at that? It's signed into somebody's account, uh, but I've connected it to the internet. It's now just downloading uh, an update. So hopefully when that goes through, I can get it all reset. But it seems to be working absolutely fine. Obviously, I'm not going to be including the power supply for the PS5 because I have a few where I haven't been able to fix a lot of PS5s. Let's head on over to Sally Spectacular spreadsheet to add all of this up. So cost for today's video was £195. For parts, I will include the price of a HDMI port of £1 because I buy them from AliExpress. The link for those will be in the description down below. It's affiliated link. Because of the condition, I'm going to go £320. Also, like I said last video, it's Christmas next month. So the demand is going to be going up for them. So we go £320. Our total profit, come on, in today's video is £101.92. Let's go. If I add 10192 at the bottom, we're slowly getting back there, hey? We're now in a total profit of minus £55.55. It's a shame I couldn't fix the switch light, but the profit that I've made from this PlayStation is amazing. I'll leave last week's episode up here. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new around here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Let's go.